The presence of the first Africans in Canada can be traced back to the 1600s. Their stories of strength, courage, and perseverance in the struggle for freedom are an integral part of not only American, but Canadian heritage as well. This is the African descent Canadian history in British Columbia. On a sunny afternoon in the year 1888 in Granville, a child is drowning. While everyone panics, a person dives into the cold waters. And as onlookers hold their breath, the child emerges in the safe hands of this gentleman carried to shore. And reunited with her mother, a hero is born. The hero is none other than the legendary Joe Fortas. Seraphim Joe Fortas was likely born in Port of Spain, Trinidad, British West Indies on February 9th, 1863. His father was a sugar plantation worker from Barbados and his mother was of either Spanish or Portuguese ancestry. Fortes chose to sail the world. His mother sent him off with a few words of wisdom, remember the son of whom you are. At the age of 17, Joe boarded the Hudson Bay Company ship, the Robert Kerr, loaded with sugar bound for Liverpool, England. He found employment as a bath attendant at St. George's Pear Head Public Baths, where he took up swimming and acquired outstanding skills. Joe won several swimming competitions, one of them over the River Mercy, which won him a medal presented by the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. Joe's travels on ships took him to Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, Panama, Amsterdam, and eventually to the Pacific Northwest. As fate would have it, the Robert Kerr ended up being shipwrecked in Granville, as it was known before it became Vancouver. On September 30th, 1885, Joe was discharged from service on the ship, thus settling in Vancouver. Joe took on several odd jobs, one of which was at the Sunnyside Hotel at the juncture of Water and Carroll Streets. During Vancouver's Great Fire, two months after the city was incorporated in 1886, Joe went back into the hotel and saved the lives of prominent MP Arthur Ross's wife and children. Joe was a bartender and then he would give rowboat rides. At that time, it was easier to row across the waters of Falls Creek and the Barad Inlet than to travel the densely forested areas of Vancouver. In 1887, Joe encountered the beautiful white sandy beach named Ayushun by the Squamish peoples, which translates to good footing. It was difficult to get to this beautiful beach because of thick rainforests. Joe took it upon himself to ask the mayor at the time, Malcolm McLean, who was related to Arthur Ross, to build a better road to the beach. In 1898, sand was added to English Bay Beach and more people began to flock there. Fortes lived in a tent on the beach and guarded the beach, making sure women and men kept to their side when changing, keeping peace and order on the shore as well as in the water. Joe taught the children how to swim, keeping an eye out for danger all around. Mothers would order their kids, don't go away from where Joe is. By 1900, a petition containing thousands of signatures was presented to the city council, demanding that Joe be given an official title and salary. The city council had no choice. Joe was officially designated a swimming instructor, lifeguard and special constable of English Bay. Although there were critics, Fortes proved his worth time and time again, having saved many lives and preventing near drownings for scores more. Fortes struck a close bond with the Scurry family through the barbershop they owned. When her husband Hiram Scurry passed, Martha Scurry helped make ends meet by turning a home into a boarding house, providing shelter to many sailors arriving on the city shores. Joe resided there, but in his usual benevolent spirit, he also helped Martha Scurry keep order. Aside from the medal from Lord May of Liverpool, Joe received another medal in July 1908 presented by the Vancouver Athletic Swimming Club for gallantry in saving lives. In 1910, the city of Vancouver recognized Joe by presenting him a gold watch and a chain, a bank draft for $472 and framed certificate. 
The city of Vancouver was constantly building to make way for progress, demolishing old structures along the way. Fortas saved a small cottage from being demolished and claimed it as his own, convincing the city to transfer it to English Bay, 1708 Beach Avenue. Joe got older and more tired. His decline began in 1919 when he caught a bad cold, followed by another one after he saved a crew of fishermen from the wintry waters. It was probably those cold water rescues and cold environment in his cabin that led to rheumatism. By 1921, he needed a cane to walk as the rheumatism had got to his limbs. In early 1922, he caught the mumps and his condition worsened to pneumonia. On February 4, 1922, old black Joe passed away. He is credited with having taught three generations of swimmers and saved many lives, probably closer to 100. The city gave him a funeral fit for a king, and rightly so as he was certainly the king of English Bay. The funeral procession had tens of thousands of onlookers, and the funeral service at Holy Rosary Cathedral was full beyond capacity. After his passing, the Kiwanis Club of Vancouver raised funds and erected a memorial fountain dedicated to Joe, unveiled at Alexandra Park. The Vancouver Public Library named the Denman Street branch after him in 1976. In 1986, the Vancouver Historical Society formally declared Joe Vancouver Citizen of the Century. In September 2005, Tom Crane, owner of Kearney Funeral Services, funded a new grave marker for Joe carved of blue granite and featured his full name, Seraphim Joe Fortes. In 2013, Canada Post released a stamp of Joe for its Black History Month series, designed by Lara Minja of Victoria. Joe Fortes was an exemplary citizen, well beyond the citizen of the century. He found his paradise and did what he could do to keep it that way. Joe dedicated the majority of his life to the children and beachgoers of English Bay. Joe was seen as priceless. Little children loved Joe.